Now, if you live here in London, you might feel reasonably safe from volcanoes. In fact, the closest ones are in Italy and in Iceland. There's an ancient volcano 80 miles away in Cambridgeshire, but it's considered extinct. So don't bother trying to toast any marshmallows. But live volcanoes can be devastating. So scientists are doing everything they can to understand them better. Fran's going to find out more down on the exhibition floor. If you know me, you will know that I have an above average interest in a fire. So I was really drawn to this stand first, all about volcanoes. And I'm here with Mikhail Camino Harry from the University of Oxford, who can explain a little bit more about this disco floor that we've got. It's not a disco floor, is it? It's not. So this is an imaginarium. Of course it is. <laughs> so it shows you a cross section to the crest beneath a volcano in the Eastern Caribbean. Nice. The island of St. Vincent. And beneath the surface, we have different magma reservoirs. Yeah. So we can imagine we have a deeper reservoir in purple. So that's the, pur the purple bit right here is the magma that's That's at the bottom. very deep. Yeah. And then we have a mid-crustal reservoir in red, and then a shallower reservoir in orange. Got you. And then you have some epic activity. And that's the, the flashing, flashing that lights, you can see. Yeah. Right? And this creates, well, these fractures create earthquakes and connect these different reservoirs of magma. And then as they connect, you can see that they coalesce. So now you have yeah. purple joining the red. And then the red makes its way to the surface as you have more connections beneath. I think an eruption's coming, isn't it? It is. Yeah. And then with more earthquakes, eventually you have an eruption. And that's the sound you're hearing. There. So it's kind of like so, a schematic of how you will have unrest going into eruption. That is brilliant. And is this a simulation of an eruption that's happened, yes. you said? So in 2020, last year, friends St. Vincent erupted. It started with three months of dome forming activity and then transitioned to explosions afterwards. We Understood. can also look at this in terms of bird's eye view. Area nice, of the island. Yeah, so we're looking down. So this is the island of St. Vincent, let's imagine. And can I stand on you this? Can. It, it's so inviting. So if I stand here, yes. I understand that you are going to do things to this and I have to stand where it's safe, right? Exactly. So you can imagine this is the island and you have to decide as a resident where's the best place to. Uh, to, of course, to build your it's, life. you're making it into a game, but it is quite serious yes. stuff. This. this is a serious science that's happening about volcanoes, lives are at risk, decisions need to be made. Yes. And so using this information, but doing it in this way lets people understand it. Yes, exactly. Absolutely. So you have this island and you decided to, to set yourself I'm up here. I'm going to be here for now. I might move closer. I'll see where the, where the volcano, where the eruption happens. So then this is where the volcano is. Oh, OK. Right? Then you have some earthquakes related to the volcano, and then you have some gases. So, so far you're in a good spot because So the yellow gases, is gas. Yes, this is a gas. And the flashing is like the earthquakes, the earthquakes happening around. I don't know if I'm going to be safe, let's see. <laughs> now you have some pyroclastic flows going right. that way, and then you have some the ash cloud going this pyroclastic way. Pyroclastic flows being like lava flowing over like the... like superheated gas. Oh gosh. That moves at a very high speed, and it kills people. Yeah, which is serious stuff. Yeah. yeah, so so far you've I've chosen, chosen okay, yeah. but chosen. things don't always happen this way, but so far. And then as activity progresses, we see more activity oh, happening oh. this way. What does yellow mean? So yellow means we might have some lahars coming this way, so when water interacts with ash. So I should probably evacuate, right? Yeah. I'm going to go over here. So, of course, that's where scientists become important because they will warn you before. Absolutely, because you can't necessarily right. cross over that because no. it might be a danger zone. Yeah, so this is how the game becomes interactive and this is how you can get an idea of what it's like people living on volcan volcanic islands. Gosh, thank you so much. And yes, this is a game, but even though I'm stood here on a simulation, it is quite nerve wracking. And I suppose it, it puts it into perspective, the important work the scientists are doing. And then people like Mikhail that are making it really understandable for the next generation. But um, it's still a lot of fun to play, but back to you, Roma. Nice work, Fran. Now to tell us more, I'm thrilled to be joined by Richie Robertson, a volcanologist from the University of the West Indies. Welcome to Summer Science Live, Richie. It's great to have you here. Thank you, I'm glad to be here. Could you tell us a little bit about how you got interested in volcanoes and what led you to the career that you've been following? It's actually a long story, but I'll make it short. <laughs> um, I'm from the, from the island of St. Vincent the Grenadines. I'm from the island of St. Vincent. And in 1979, the volcano exploded, it had an eruption. At the time, 
I was in secondary school, I was in sixth form, and the eruption was so impactful. Um, you know, we woke up early in the morning, the volcano was erupting, and I just happened to be the person that went to my father towards the volcano to evacuate my grandmother. So the impact of the eruption, this, the spectacular nature of it, and then finally the fact that when the scientists came in to monitor the volcano to tell us what was happening, I realized that all of the scientists were coming from outside of the island and there wasn't mm -hmm. any Vincentian who knew about the volcano. Mm -hmm. And I took it upon myself, crazily, that I would become that person. And that is where I am now. That's amazing. How yes. long have you been doing this as your career now? Well, I've been doing it since 19... 87, I guess, okay. officially. So, yeah. you know, it's so long I, I could <laughs> stop counting the years. But, um, but interestingly, one of the things that have happened is that the volcano had an eruption in 2020, 2021, and I was able to come full circle mm. and be the person involved in providing that scientific guidance to the government and people of St. Vincent. So do you think, is that your favorite volcano or is it your least favorite volcano, I well, guess, in a way? <laughs> I, I guess in terms of how it looks, I think it's really a majestic mountain. Mm. Um, in terms of systems, I guess it's my favorite, it's one of the favorite ones, but there are a couple of, there are 19 volcanoes that we monitor in the region. So, you know, lots of volcanoes in Dominica in a couple of the islands are, are just as interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and what makes a volcanic, a volcanic system interesting to you? Well, I, I, I guess it's, it's a combination of things. Um, I'm particularly interested in, in trying to ensure that people can live safely in volcanoes. So. I think if a volcano system is one which has um, vulnerable people close by, I'm particularly interested in trying to understand it better so that we could provide the guidance needed to get people out of the way in gains of harm. I think for a lot of us, when we think of volcanoes exploding, it's what we've seen in Hollywood films. But could you tell us a little bit more about what the explosions or the eruptions actually look like? Well, the volcanoes in regions like in the Caribbean, which are subduction zone volcanoes, are ones that tend to explode. So that when the wow. magma, this, this molten rock comes to the surface, it breaks up into pieces and it has these big explosions that then send a lot of fine grain material and coarser grain material up into the air. Um, those are the spectacular ones that people are, you know, when people think of a volcanic eruption, mm -hmm. they think of an explosion. But there are volcanoes like in Hawaii, like in Iceland, where you have some things there, the magma is not as explosive and it comes out as this sort of really red flowing mm. mass of rock that, that people could then sit down in the chairs and look at safely. The ones that are dangerous are the explosive ones. Yeah, no, I, and, I mean, I always think of, there's a certain amount of beauty to the magma, isn't there? Maybe, how close have you been to magma and what, what has that experience been like for you? Perhaps in hindsight, in my early part of my career, a bit too close. You'd be too close. But, um, <laughs> But yeah, I've, I've been in the, in the days of the Montserrat eruption, we were quite close because there's a certain amount of, you know, uncertainty and ignorance in terms of what we were doing, and we, but we were trying to collect data. Um, depending on the kind of magma that is coming out, if it's more basalt, it tends to be more runny and, and it's probably safer to get close to it, but it's still quite hot, so you really should not get within a few feet of it, because even as you get close, mm. it will, you could feel that You can kind of feel heat. this heat coming off. If it's one of the volcanoes, like in our part of the region, subduction zone volcanoes, which are explosive, you should you should just stay run. several miles away from it, because wow. those could, could produce things that can, can um, cause you great harm quite quickly. Yeah. I was really interested what you said about scientists coming in from the outside. Can you tell us a little bit about the knowledge that the local people would hold about a volcano that you know, external scientists might not? Well, it, if you, especially indigenous people, if you bear in mind that they have been the longest lived people in a particular region, they would have a lot of knowledge of past eruptions. Mm. And what we know from volcanoes is that the way in which they erupt in the past, often they erupt in a similar way in the future. So if you discount that knowledge, um, you discount a lot of the experiential knowledge that you could have that could inform us. So yes, the people who live on volcanic islands have a lot of experience dealing with volcanic eruptions, both in terms of how you can respond sensibly, as well as the mad things that can happen. So one of the things that we try to do is try to get into that knowledge, try to learn as much as possible, not only from the rocks itself, which is important, but also from the people who live on the islands. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, it is really important, I think, to listen to the local people. Do you have any examples of when things have gone wrong when that hasn't been done? Yes, I do. And, and to do that, I'll have to go back to my favorite volcano, as I, as I mentioned before which is La Soufraie Volcano in St. Vincent. In 1902, it had an explosive eruption. 
And one of the things from looking at the past history know is that there were some fisher women, some women who's, who, who got fish from one side of the island, went up the volcano, came down to another, another village, and they sold the fish there. And what happened is that earlier on in the eruption, there was indication that the volcano was about to erupt, and they noticed this, this, these changes. And when they went to the village that they were selling in, they tried to alert the people, the people in, in Georgetown. They even went to the police station and told them. And they were, in fact, one of them was almost arrested because they told them they were being nuisances, so they went back. Um, and they only, the people in that village only realized what was happening when someone who was a plantation owner um, went up and saw it. But by then it was too late because the eruption had started and people actually ended up dying. Um, and that's one of the reasons why in our exhibition, in our exhibit, we're focusing on what we say, learning from the past. It, it's about, there's a section about curating crises, sort of looking at past crises. Mm -hmm. And we're exhibiting some of what we have learned from these past crises. Because for us, geology, the past is a key to the future, not only in the rocks, but in terms of the history from people. And we're trying to learn from these hidden voices, you know, these fisherwomen that you would never see in the records, we're trying to learn from what their experience was to tell us what could happen in the future. So, I mean, the moral of the story is listen to women. That's what I'm going to take away from this. Yes, yes, yeah. Listen to everyone, especially women. Yes. Especially women. <laughs> Thank you so much, Richie. It's been really great to chat yeah. to you.